Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we have some updates on Tesla's battery day, the Octo Valve in the Model Y, a hacking attempt on Tesla's network, and some updates on the Lucid Air. But first, I want to check in on the stock. It's been a few days since we've talked about it. Closed today up about 4% to a new all-time high close of $2,238.75. That compared to the NASDAQ down 0.3%. So it's been kind of a crazy two weeks ever since announcing the stock split. Tesla stock is now up 63% in just over two weeks. In other market news, Chinese electric vehicle maker Xpeng Inc. came public today under ticker XPEV. If you're curious about learning more about them, I did an episode on them a couple weeks ago. Right now their market cap sits around $16 billion, and this is just an FYI, I don't have any position in the company. All right, so first thing today is some updates on the rumors that have been circulating around Battery Day. Remember earlier this week we talked about silicon nanowire technology developed by Amprius because that technology looked a little similar to the background image that Tesla used for the shareholder Battery Day website. In that episode I talked about how I was skeptical but I didn't necessarily have any idea what those images were at the time. But yesterday on Twitter Elon added a little bit of clarification. In reply to a Clean Technica article about what's going on with Tesla, and Amprius, Elon originally replied nothing with a side eye emoji, but then added more detail saying, quote, but actually nothing, was surprised to hear there across the road. Adding silicon to carbon anode makes sense, we already do. Question is just what ratio of silicon to carbon and what shape. Silicon expands like crazy during discharge and comes apart, so cycle life is usually bad, end quote. So that settles that portion of it, but then Holmars tweeted, so what the heck is this background, a roll of stuff inside a cell or something? And Elon replied to that saying, quote, we were too obtuse for our own good, although I think it works aesthetically. Those are folded over current collectors at the top slash bottom of the cell, which are important, but I don't want to jump the gun on September 22nd, dot dot dot, end quote. So this tweet brings us back to May, when we had previously discussed a patent for a tabless electrode that Elon had replied to a tweet about, saying that it was, quote, way more important than it sounds, end quote. Elon seems to be hinting at that same thing again here, and he is again calling it important. As far as the image goes, if you want a better understanding of that, I think on Twitter it was BR Cooper who first, at least that I saw, sort of recognized this and tweeted about it early in the day yesterday. In terms of the implications of this, here is a clip from when we discussed it back in May. Next, I wanted to briefly touch on a battery cell patent filed by Tesla. This is for a battery cell with a tabless electrode. Elon replied to a tweet on this, also again from Tasmanian today, saying, quote, way more important than it sounds, end quote. I gotta give a big shout out here to the YouTube channel, The Limiting Factor. I'm not a battery expert. I do as much reading as I can on the topic, but he really has a good understanding of these things. So heavily recommend that channel in general, but he did a live stream on this news today. And I've done some other reading on the topic as well, but basically what Tesla is doing here is they're taking a part out of the battery. And we've heard Elon say many times before, the best part is no part. In the current batteries, these tabs are what connect the cathode and the anode to the positive and negative terminals of the battery. So all the electrodes must travel to the location of that tab that adds resistance because there's more traveling, more distance to cover. So what Tesla is describing with this patent is to add a layer of conductive material essentially on the cap of the battery cell to replace those tabs. My understanding is then because that material would be covering the entire surface area of the end of the cell, the electrons within the cell would need to travel less distance, meaning less resistance, meaning less thermal waste. So in theory, what this might allow Tesla to do is use larger battery cells. Larger cells are important because every cell obviously has a casing, so in theory, the less casing and the more active ingredients, the more energy density you can have, but obviously it's more complex than just making the casing bigger, otherwise they would just do that. But if you have a larger cell that can do things like add more heat, so then maybe you need to have more thermal management material, potentially defeating the purpose in the first place. However, when you have something like this that can potentially reduce that resistance and reduce the heat given off, then maybe it makes sense to optimize around that larger cell and you can have fewer cells at the end of the day in your battery pack that's going to save you a lot of time from a manufacturing perspective. So you could be looking at more energy density, you could be looking at an easier manufacturing process which would mean lower cost. At the end of the day, a similar thought process applies to the Maxwell Dry battery electrode technology. So you can start to see if a couple of these things are implemented at a similar time, how this might represent something more equivalent to a battery breakthrough than a battery iteration. All right, back to present day, Rob, then. The only thing I think I would add to that at this point is that we know that Elon has also talked about going straight from cell to pack and skipping the battery module. So I think that's another one that we can add to the list of highly probable things alongside dry battery electrode and tabless. 
All right, next up today is a nice little update from Sandy Monroe on the Model Y. He recently had a video, and in the video he described how they recently had a customer come in with a brand new Tesla that was built about a month ago, he said. And he talked specifically about the Octovalve, noting that the Octovalve had had 13 different design changes associated with it compared to the Model Y that Monroe had previously torn down about three months ago. So, I mean, <laughs> that just shows how fast Tesla is iterating. Monroe said, quote, I couldn't get one design change through in a year when I was at Ford Motor Company, end quote. He then added, quote, that's why they're kicking some serious butt, end quote. Many of you noted that in the bull bear debate yesterday, we didn't even have a chance to go through Tesla's advantages from an engineering and iteration perspective, manufacturing battery technology. The list goes on and on energy, solar. I mean, we talked for an hour and we maybe got through, I don't know, a third of the Tesla bull case but that extremely rapid iteration on the Model Y Octoval design is a perfect example of something that Tesla does that other automakers aren't really set up to be able to do. Also relevant to yesterday's conversation, particularly around the dealership model, is a report today from EqualOcean.com that says, quote, Tesla revealed to Equal Ocean Automobile that it will establish its first delivery center in Shanghai, herein after referred to as Pudong Delivery Center in Pudong. The Pudong Delivery Center will be renovated at the end of August and will be officially handed over to Tesla. It is expected to be put into use in early September." End quote. This location essentially used to be a used car showroom. It's been rented by Tesla. It's about 4,500 square meters, and Equal Ocean says, quote, According to the plan, the Pudong Delivery Center will mainly deliver Model 3 and Model Y models produced by the Shanghai Superfactory in the future, with a daily throughput of 200 to 300 vehicles. End quote. Annualized, that would be a capacity of about 73,000 vehicles to 109,000 vehicles. That would be capacity, though. I'm sure it wouldn't operate at full capacity every single day of the entire year. Still a pretty cool piece of news here, and I think continues to show that, again, the dealership model is not in Tesla's plans. Sticking with China, we have a report from ray for tesla on Twitter that Tesla has just opened up a significant number of job postings for Gigafactory Shanghai. Among Motor Shop, General Assembly, Body, and Logistics, They've added about 900 new positions, and there are also a number of other categories where Tesla has added an unspecified number of openings. The influx of open positions seems likely to relate to Tesla preparing to ramp up phase two. Possibly further hinting at that, Ray for Tesla points out that there are open positions for operators and technicians for die casting machines and molten furnaces. Tesla has accomplished so much in 2020, but looking ahead to 2021, it's hard not to be excited about what the year has in store. Next up is a story that could be honestly straight out of a movie. It's pretty crazy. It could have a full episode dedicated to itself, but I think I'll just put a link to Tesla Roddy's article in the comments because I think they thoroughly recapped it. But the Cliff Notes version is that a Russian citizen has been arrested and detained by the US FBI on accusations of conspiring to breach the network of a US company and introduce malware to compromise the company's networks. That company, as it turns out, is Tesla. The accused party reportedly established a relationship with a Russian-speaking employee of Tesla that had access to Tesla's networks, and then offered this person $1 million in cash or Bitcoin to introduce malware into Tesla's networks. They would then try to use that information to extort Tesla for ransom money. As it turns out, this employee actually reported this to Tesla, who got in touch with the FBI. The FBI then worked with this employee to extract information from this accused party, and they actually went as far as setting up a meeting where the employee wore a wire and received a payment, which then eventually led to the arrest. Just another casual day at the office, I guess, participating in a sting operation, but good for that employee. I'm sure Tesla is very grateful. Elon on Twitter in reply to the Tesla Rati article said, quote, much appreciated. This was a serious attack, end quote. All right, the last bit for today is an update on the Lucid Motor Lucid Air, which is going to be fully unveiled on September 9th. As we had talked about a week or two ago, Lucid recently tested the range of the Lucid Air on a cycle like the EPA test, though it wasn't the official test, and got a 517 mile range result. Car and Driver and Motor Trend also performed tests and they found a similar overperformance to the EPA estimated range of the Lucid Air versus the Model S, which is about 28% to what they actually achieved in their tests. So a strong result from Lucid at the time they had said that their battery pack capacity was somewhere under 130 kilowatt hours. Well, we do have an update now. They've announced that the actual size is 113 kilowatt hours. So I think that's a very, very impressive number. That's only about 13% more energy capacity than the 100 kilowatt hour pack in the Model S. Yet again, they're getting about 28% more range. 
So definitely something worth keeping an eye on. And I think Lucid is doing a good job of pursuing a niche that Tesla is a little bit less interested in, in that luxury market. Lucid does plan to have more affordable offerings, but this is going to be somewhere around $150,000 to start. So it's not necessarily the most direct competitor with the Model S. And there's still, of course, a lot to learn about Lucid's battery. We don't know the longevity. We don't know the cost. But definitely something I'll be keeping a close eye on, especially if Lucid could somehow secure a partnership on the supercharger network, depending, of course, on Elon's thoughts on Peter Rawlinson, who is the CEO of Lucid, but who was previously the chief engineer of the Model S. And I'm not sure on what terms that relationship ended. All right, that is where we will leave it for today then. As always, thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and sign up for notifications. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast. And I'll see you tomorrow for the Friday, August 28th episode of Tesla Daily, the last day that Tesla will trade above 2000 at least for a while. Thank you.